All right, Psalm 141, let's call this week's set of lessons in summary, because it seems as though we are beginning the descent. If we liken it to a plane descending toward its landing, we are looking at the descent of the Psalms as they close out with what we have already called the Psalms of Ascents. In my understanding, called the Psalms of Ascents because as the Israelites would ascend the elevation towards Jerusalem, these were some of the Psalms that might have been on their greatest hits list, my ad lib, of course. But in this set of Psalms of Ascents that mark the descent toward the end of the Psalms in general, one of the things that caught my attention is that this once again seems to be a bookend psalm, even if it literally doesn't start out with the same language that it ends with. Here he's going to essentially ask God, that being David is going to seem to ask God to guard me at the beginning and the end. In the beginning, he seems to ask God to guard me from me in quite possibly three different ways, as at the end, he is going to ask God to guard me from them. The beginning of the psalm, the three ways in which he seems to ask God to guard me from me is, first of all, set a guard over my mouth, something that we have seen David ask before in the context of God set a guard over my mouth when I am in the presence of the wicked and quite possibly tempted to speak even accurately in a way that might bring me judgment, understanding that we can sometimes say the right things the wrong way. He's going to build on that concept with another theme that I think we have seen before, that being, God, please do not incline or prevent me from inclining my heart toward the delicacies of the wicked or what seems to be the benefits of doing things in wrong or even underhanded ways. Understanding that we have seen the psalmist talk about that to some degree, uh, seemingly in both Psalms 37 and 73, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to double check that. But finally, he's going to seem to ask God to protect him in a third way when he asks, as opposed to inclining my heart to the delicacies of the wicked, God, please allow me to incline my heart to even harsh rebuke, saying, let a righteous man strike me. He considers that to be a blessing, a level of wisdom that might seem hard to relate to until you understand the way in which it may form the basis of a prayer that God is willing to hear as he will go on to say, even though all our bones may be spread at the door of Sheol, God, please protect me from the end of the wicked. Because in the end of this book end Psalm, David is going to go on to say, God, please protect me from them, meaning protect me from the wicked. And so if David is going to ask that God protect him from the wicked, understanding that God is fair, Likewise, as we have seen before, David realizes that he is going to have to be cleansed of the habits and the ways of the wicked. Understanding that the delicacies of the wicked may be one way in which he can be enticed into taking on the habits of the wicked. However, the three things that, uh, in addition to what we've already referenced, the three things that kind of reminded me of some summary themes from the Psalms are the way in which he wants God to keep him from every evil or wicked way. Going back to that theme we saw before with unleavened bread going all the way back to the feast of Passover, reaching all the way forward to the writings of Paul, who used that concept of unleavened bread in his warnings or his counsel to the church to clean out every underhanded way that might obscure a clear understanding of whether or not we actually represent God. And two, connected to that theme of David asking God to cleanse him of every wicked way. He doesn't seem to demand a direct message from God as much as he wants God to simply open him up to the rebuke that God might send through people, even as we've already mentioned, even if that comes in the form of harsh rebuke or even a strike. Pointing forward likewise to the Proverbs that we will, God will be looking at soon, David seems to be introducing us to a theme that we will see Solomon discuss when he seems to tell us that a red flag for a lack of wisdom is the way in which we bristle at or even reject rebuke. David's going to say, even if it has to come harshly, if it's godly rebuke, I need it. 
God willing, avoiding the tragedy of Josiah, a great king who was not able to listen to godly rebuke from what he quite possibly considered to be an ungodly king. Leading to the third summary theme that I thought I saw, that being the recurring theme of consistency, meaning David not asking for a double standard, but to the degree he is asking for relief, especially from an enemy, he often asks God, as we have mentioned, to cleanse him from the ways of that enemy. This psalm may be a summary reminder of that consistency in the way in which David may, in my paraphrase, say, God essentially cleanse me of underhanded ways as a rational basis for then by the end of the psalm asking God to cleanse him of everyone who deals in underhanded ways.